Welcome everybody to SF Live. My name is Kai Hoffman. I'm the CEO of the SOAR Financial Group and it is my great pleasure to welcome Peter Dimbicki here in a few short seconds in the studio. He's sitting already across from me. I'm looking forward to the conversation about Tier 1 Silver. They've got some really interesting projects down in Peru and uh, we're going to find out a bit more about the projects in a few short seconds here. Uh, but uh, before we switch over, make sure to follow us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, hit that like and subscribe button and uh, leave a comment. What do you think of Tier 1 Silver? What do you think of the conversation? Are there any questions we didn't ask or questions you want to answer just put them in there and uh, we'll, we'll get to those really appreciate that and uh, I think it's time now that I introduce my guest and uh, switch over the camera and uh, Peter it is great to have you on and uh, thanks for joining us on the program here great to be here my pleasure yeah, it's a, it's great. You're, we're both in Vancouver, so it just makes sense to do it in person. It's like I get so much more out of it. Yeah, I know, just a couple blocks away too. So uh, uh, hopefully, I'll be back soon again. But, yeah, definitely. We'll we'll need to do this more regular basis. So, um, but Peter, first time on SF Live with Tier One Silver, um, President and CEO. Why don't you give us a bit of an introduction? To tell us about the company. In three, 30, 60 seconds, then we'll dive a bit deeper. Sure thing. So Tier One Silver is actually a spin out of its former parent company, Orin Resources. And uh, so Oren split up into three separate entities, Fury Gold, which hosts all the Canadian assets. Uh, Tier 1 Silver was the, the second spin out to make it to market. Uh, we listed just last June in, in 2021, so relatively new to the public market. Um, and then there's a third company called Copernico, uh, which Ivan Bebek, my chairman and founder, uh, will be heading up as CEO, and that has yet to come to market, but we're hoping that comes to market in the next few months. So Tier 1 Silver you know, hosted a lot of um, precious metals, I would say, uh, targets at the time of the spin out. And since then, it has just uh, evolved into a real going concern in Peru. Yeah, just Peru focused, right? Just Peru focused at this moment. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I like starting with the cap structure, uh, sort of brings sure. everybody on the same level. Um, run us through the key, the key highlights there. Sure. So, when, as I mentioned, we are a spin out. So, when we um, first came to market, we inherited 112 million shares from Orange shareholders uh, who each got a whole share of Tier 1 silver. Before we listed last June, we raised $13.5 million Canadian at a dollar per share, uh, which brought us to around uh, 125 million shares out. And we recently just committed uh, uh, or uh, completed our second uh, capital raise in a private placement. We raised $6 million at um, 45 cents a share. Uh, which brings us to around 133 million shares outstanding. Tell us a bit more about the financing. Like, who, who came in? Any institutional support there as well? Yeah, so it was uh, it was quite a dramatic spring, to be completely honest. I mean, um, we had a, a really good silver market at the time. Silver was hanging on around $25, $26. Um, we did, uh, um, you know, get into negotiations with an investment bank uh, to do a raise. But at the time, the markets were, were falling over. Silver price was coming off dramatically. And you know, we just we we took a second look at the finance, and we said this probably isn't in the best interest of our shareholders if we continue down this road. Uh, so we kind of we pulled back. Um, the terms were were uh, price point a little bit less, uh, but we got to do it on our own terms. And 80% of our financing that we brought in a private placement uh, came from current shareholders. You know, so it just shows that um, much like our first financing that we did into Tier One. Uh, I think 80% uh, uh, came from Oren shareholders. They love Tier 1. They love the story. They love where we were starting. And the same again. People want to see uh, what we could have here. So it was, uh, it, was, it was really nice to see. And just again, our shareholders are the best. We have such a great, uh, great group. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and I see uh, you have Newmont in as well, 8.8% shareholder. How, how did that come along? You know, so in the Newmont stake was a stake, uh, a legacy stake from Oren. Uh, so of course, they got their, mm -hmm. their full share. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's it's always great to have support uh, of them in the market, and you know, um, you know, we don't bug them, but I think they're watching us closely. Yeah. Did they participate in the last financing? Uh, no, they did not. Okay. No, no. So a couple of funds uh, uh, um, uh, invested in this latest private placement, but of course, we have our our high net worth individuals, uh, a great uh, American based uh, investors. We have over forty percent of our shareholders are based in the U.S. and um, I believe as of last count, we have over 14,000 shareholders. So we are, uh, um, you know, liquid. Uh, we like to trade. People like the story. Uh, we love our American shareholders. Uh, they understand the project very well. Uh, so yeah, we are truly global, and uh, it's a great place to be. Yeah, fantastic. 14,000 shareholders. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. sure. Is. So it's yeah. great liquidity. Yeah. Um, how much cash is now in the in the treasury? And uh, we'll, we'll talk use of proceeds, of course. For sure. So um, after that raise, you know, we've been we've been getting our guys back on the ground and exploring and, and getting those teams out on the ground at uh, both of our, our premier projects, Kirby and Hurricane. 
Uh, so we have uh, a little under five million in the treasury, and uh, really this is this is targeted to really getting our our next drill targets in hand. You know, we want to be really methodical on this next path, and we want to have twenty plus targets in hand that we know are going to yield great results for investors. Uh, so we're taking our time. We also understand market conditions. You know, I come from a capital markets background, so you know, do we want to be spending like crazy and just expect that the money will be there when we need it? No, we're being very prudent, very sticky, trying to cut costs wherever we can, but at the same time trying to expedite, you know, the b- biggest world discovery that anyone's ever seen. So, a uh, bit of a conundrum there, but uh, you know, we're not special as much as our parents would tell us. Uh, we're, we're just like every other company out there, and we're seeing the market conditions. So. Uh, on behalf of shareholders, we're just being very prudent and methodical. Fantastic. Yeah, I know that's what we want here. Um, b- before we dive more into like how you're spending the money, mm-hmm. obviously, um, I want to learn more. Uh, we'll talk trading activity. Sure. Because talk, talk markets for a second. Because I've noticed a lot of shares, um, it's mostly charts, they've bottomed. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm just curious what kind of feedback you're getting from your investors as well. Because I looked at your chart and it looks like, of course, you yeah, had a sell off. Everybody was sold off. Like there's no, di- di- no difference really. Sure. But uh, it seems like there's a bottom now. It feels like that, and it, and it sure looks like that on the charts. I mean, we don't, we never know what tomorrow is going to bring. Um, but uh, you know, from the inception of Tier One Silver, we came to market, and uh, for just context on how our share trades, uh, silver was thirty dollars an ounce. Um, we had gold and and copper companies changing their names to gold and silver. <laughs> you know, everyone wants to ride the wave when silver works because I think if we've seen in six of the last seven runs that gold has had a phenomenal outperformance in the market silver has outperformed gold every single time by a large margin so there's that huge torquey factor to silver that people like it's a huge wave and a lot of energy so at the time when we listed silver was around 30 dollars an ounce our share price when we listed actually went up to a dollar 90 canadian that's close to a quarter million dollar quarter billion dollar market cap and we didn't even have one drill hole in the ground just goes to show you the power of silver. Obviously, since then, silver's gone from 30, I think it hit 17 or something, and now hovering around $20 US an ounce. So, you know, if you look at our share price and you look at our presentation, there's a slide in there that does show how highly correlated we are to the price of silver, which is kind of unique for uh, a junior exploration company to be so highly correlated. You maybe expect that with the producers and the developers, but for an exploration company, be so highly correlated. It makes us believe we've been included in some sort of a, a note or an exchange traded fund along the way that tracks the price of silver. So we're liquid, as I mentioned, we have a great shareholder base, great liquidity, uh, but we do track that commodity, which is fantastic when <laughs> silver is working, but really hard when it's not. So here we are tracking around 35 cents Canadian. Uh, so our all time high is $1.90, hmm. right? So we, we have a lot of work to do. We understand that. but. I think any CEO, anybody in the capital markets and any investor with knowledge of the markets will understand um, you can't swim against the current and, and you know, expect your share price to do something if, if the underlying commodity isn't there. So, you know, I think we could talk probably for another couple hours on what we think it's <laughs> going to happen and where it should be. Uh, so I, I, I have high hopes and high expectations for the next six months for the price of silver, which means tier one silver will go along for that ride as well. Fantastic. Yeah, let's uh, let's track that closely. Yeah, but it looks like a lot of charts are bottomed for sure. Like, yeah. Definitely you see a turnaround trend change in quite a few charts. So yeah, um, really, really positive and encouraging to see. Really? Um, let's talk latest news. Sure. Like, it's also a great segue to talk about how you're going to spend your money, by the way. Yeah, but uh, you received a troll permit or uh, DIA also for your uh, for the Curry Barrio project. That's right. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so this is this is really big for a couple different reasons. One for um, on the micro level, our company itself. So, you know, when we gave our first drill pass at Kurabaya that wrapped up in, just in December, um, you know, we, we had trench and channel sample results coming out uh, while we were drilling. And we found that our best channel sample results in trenches uh, and rock samples were coming from this northern area of our, of our property called the Kambaya Zone. Uh, unfortunately, the, the polygon or the drill permit at the time, uh, you know, didn't allow us to get up to that area and drill it out. And so we always had really high uh, ambitions to get up there and test and see what we could do there. So we went out and applied for our DIA, which is is really monumental for the company because it allows us, you know, 20 more drill pads and up to 10 holes per pad. That's 200 more holes. It's very allows us to be very aggressive. Our our, our previous permit that we had allowed us only two holes per pad. Hmm. So it's the definition of a needle in a haystack to uh, a piece of property that had never before been drilled. And our geologist did a fantastic job. 
uh, of doing that based just on geophysics and mapping and channel sampling to have 30% of our first drill program holes be of economic value and a couple of which were, you know, bonanza grade. So here we are with our new permit. We can encompass this new Kambaya zone, which uh, I can get into in a bit on why it's so important, um, but allows us to be much more aggressive with our drilling, uh, allows us much more flexibility with our pads. And the second part to, you know, um, this permit is, you know, I would say a lot of incoming questions from shareholders and potential investors is, you know, what's going on in Peru politically? Uh, and is this the reason why you guys haven't received your permit? You know, in the background, everything was going to, to the timing was great. You know, we were receiving all the right feedback from all the right departments on what we were supposed to do. And, uh, uh, and then the permit came through. Um, but from an investor standpoint, they're always looking to say, hey, what could go wrong here? My goodness, you know, what's going on in Peru politically? Is that a reason why um, you guys haven't received your permit yet? And then for the permit to come in, uh, when it did, it's just a, a nice little sigh of relief, but I think we yeah. all know what's coming. I think we might have to take a break here for a second. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Peter, to follow up on the DIA as well, like what was the timing on it? What did you expect? Was that all on time, on budget, on plan and everything? Because Peru is a bit uh, politically iffy these days. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, we had internal expectations of to receiving it uh, by the end of the summer. And so what our team was able to do, Christian Rios, our SVP of exploration, is also head of our ops down there. And he and his team that handle permitting and everything and uh, navigating the labyrinth that is Peru, uh, once again, has come through uh, way before expectations to get us our permits. So again, it signals one great things for tier one silver is allows us to go and really attack this, this zone that we really want to go after. Uh, but also two, it really signals that Peru is open for business and they are still supporting mining exploration. It's a big part of their GDP. Um, whatever you read in the headlines about Peru, uh, which we've seen a lot over the last year, um, it really doesn't affect uh, the exploration companies uh, because you know we're not leaving a big footprint. We don't employ thousands of, of rural workers. Uh, so they're very supportive. And really in Peru, it comes down to the community. Uh, you can get all the government permits that you want in the world, but they're worth nothing unless you have the communities on your side. And for us, it's really treating the communities like partners and, uh, and, and, and not something that you just, you know, um, go to when you want access to something or you need something from them. You know, we really want to involve them in the project and make sure that we're providing employment infrastructure and, and, uh, and have great community relations. Fantastic. Yeah, no, that's great that you have that permit now. And uh, mm. let's talk curb in a bit more mm. detail. Um, what is the plan now that you have the permit? Like, what are the next steps? Yeah, so right now, as I mentioned, being being super methodical. So uh, we were always allowed to go up and uh, and explore at this new Kambaya zone. Um, so really, the, the previous drill program that we conducted uh, gave us a huge amount of confidence that you know, these phenomenal uh, grades that we encountered with our first rock samples and then followed up with our channel sampling. I mean, we saw grades up to almost 300,000 grams per ton silver, up to almost a kilo of gold. We have 70 plus samples over a thousand grams per ton silver and two and a half grams per ton gold. So, you know, where's the source? You know, at first it's, it's you know, the question is this just, just a, uh, a surface phenomenon or does, you know, does nothing exist subsurface? Well, we confirmed in our first drill pass that yes, it does uh, exist subsurface. So let's trace it down. Let's find out where we're going to get uh, the meteor, the, the thicker veins, the bigger intercepts, because we got the grade. Now let's find out the source and, and really find that true world class discovery hole that everybody's uh, expecting from us. And I think, you know, this permit allows us to go up to Kambaya. And, you know, the, the reason why we, why we love it is when we when we first finished our first drill pass uh, in December, um, you know, as a CEO, I wasn't completely satisfied with that. And I think, you know, everybody's, are we on the right track? Are we doing the right thing? So we went out and hired two world renowned consultants to go and conduct site visits in February. And they walked the site for a week and full rundowns. They had full access to our data room and our, and all the drill holes and everything that we've done. And they both came back independently separately and said, you guys are on the right track. There is a story of erosion here. The silver system is being driven up to surface by something. And over the years, over 50 million years or so, uh, there's a story of erosion. So if you guys go north on your property to this Kambaya zone, we have five or 600 more meters of preserved uh, precious metal system. This is where you're gonna have your best intercepts, your wider intercepts, and it's a huge area to go after. So 100% this is your target. And then they also came back and said, you know, um, I know the focus was silver for you guys, but there is every indication you guys are sitting on or a huge copper porphyry nearby. And so again, uh, 
this this new permit encompasses this and allows us to go test for that porphyry as well so really it's a geologist dream uh, to have a potential huge silver system sitting right on top or nearby a copper porphyry and i think that's what has us on the map of a lot of major companies and, and a lot of people um you know kicking our tires interesting yeah that's something it's a probably a first first world problem to have those problems right for sure yeah, <laughs> absolutely yeah. Yeah. um but to, I want to be more, a bit more specific. Sure. Now that you have the permit, you only got it recently, right? right? So I'm, I'm I'm poking the bear here to see what comes out. Like, okay, we're going to drill X amount of meters. Yeah, we're going to put them in X amount of drill holes. That's what I want to hear. Like, yeah. Do, do you have that formulated yet? Yeah. So the drill plan is is being formulated like as we speak. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we weren't just going out and drilling blindly. We want to have you know 20, 30 robust quality uh, channel samples targets to go after. Um, we want to, you know, measure twice, cut once, so to speak, and, and be really methodical in what we're doing. So formulating the drill plan, and we won't bring out the drill until we have those targets in hand, ready to go. Um, and uh, so that's that's the focus right now. So a team of geos uh, fully going after the Kambaya zone, also reaching out to other areas at, at Kurabaya uh, that have um, other potential porphyry, you know, targets as well. So uh, really, really intriguing on the silver front, on the base metal front. Uh, but that is currently what's going on right now and this is you know the permit really gives us that flexibility fantastic yeah no and um, have you secured drill contractors oh yes yeah that's all secured yeah, it's all it's all there all our services are ready to go on standby and uh, when we give the nod then it's then it's uh, full steam ahead yeah. and i'm assuming like 80 90 percent of the drilling will be at the Kambaya zone that's correct yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that'll be a, that'll be our focus for sure and there are a couple other targets uh in our previous area that we want to go back after and, and retest as well fantastic yeah that makes a lot of sense um do we expect any more channel results coming out in the next few days weeks like what, what can we look yeah, forward they're to gonna, they're going to be filtering out through the end of the summer throughout the fall and and early winter as we conduct other areas of Kurabaya. so a constant stream of, of channel sampling and trenching until we get drilling and then obviously the focus will will turn to the drill results there yeah no that makes a lot of sense and uh, of course using that for targeting as well for sure that, yeah uh, uh, channel samples like what's the lap turnaround time like is it as, uh, as good or bad uh, as with the main drills yeah not bad actually i mean we, we experienced uh drilling throughout the heart of of covid down in peru and what we noticed from the labs was uh you know their their health um uh platform in peru wasn't really great so the 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 health ministry um uh, commandeered all the oxygen from all the labs because they needed it to, to treat patients so at one point the turnaround town time was uh you know, a couple months, two and a half months, but now I think we've got it down to, to four to six weeks, which is kind of uh, not bad oh. considering on a world scale. You know, yeah, that sounds at, so. pretty yeah. industry standard, to be honest. Yeah. Like nothing too crazy. Yeah, no, not too good, not too bad. Yeah, like, it's, it's not really... bad. It's actually working pretty well in the labs in Lima are doing quite well. And I, I should say one other thing that we are testing for within the Kambaya zone is uh, we have noticed this porphyritic rock, these porphyritic fingers uh, emanating on surface. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and age date those rocks. And I think that's a big uh, catalyst for us as well to see uh, what age they come back. You know, if it comes back in that Paleocene era, which matches all of our neighbors to our Northwest and to our Southeast in Chile, uh, along that current trend, you know, the Cerro Verdes, the Tocopalas, Cave Echoes, uh, you know, that's that's a huge, a huge indicator that, you know, we might have something special in our hands. Yeah. Fantastic. Now that's, uh, we'll, we'll drill on that a little. I'll get you back on the program once we see some more yeah. results come out of, of course, as well. But going through your presentation, I stumbled over one term and uh, I want you to explain it a little bit to me like I'm five years old. Mm -hmm. right? um, but to Curry Bay, it says in the presentation, I'm just quoting it right from here. First epithermal intermediate sulfidation system on a world class porphyry belt. It sounds very highly search engine optimized, <laughs> um, but but what does that really mean? Because it seems like you're mixing two or three systems in one and uh, yeah. throwing it into one big hodgepodge. Yeah, so I mean, it, it's such a great story about how, how Kurabaya came to be, how it got to this point. And when we set off our geos five years ago to scan the entire coastline of Peru uh, in search for the number one precious metals target uh, in the country, um, the number one target came back at Kurabaya. I mean, here we have a most uh, um, prolific copper porphyry belts uh, possibly in the world, host to all the giants that you know I previously mentioned, uh, just within all within 100 kilometers of us, um, up and down the coast of Peru, and then again they start again in Chile. So for years, people, geologists, companies have been scanning this area where Kurabaya exists, looking for that next copper porphyry, that huge open pit mine that's going to have a hundred year mine life and uh, no one was really ever paid attention to the precious metals and so when our when our geologists went out and employed their technique their stream sediment technique their blagging technique and it came back the Kurabaya was the number one target uh, it had everybody scratching their head they said how interesting that you guys would find a precious metals target on this uh, prolific copper porphyry belt 
And so really that's, that's the meaning of it is, is um, uh, no one has ever really stumbled upon this. If you go 100 kilometers north into this uh, more of an epithermal belt where we see some operating precious metals mines, some silver, some gold, uh, maybe that's more than norm. Uh, but we are not the norm. We're, we're creating something really special here. And uh, hey, I think we've got both. Fantastic. Yeah, no, great. Um, we'll come sort of to the end of our conversation, but we haven't talked hurricane yet. Right. Yeah. Um, any, any plans there? Any activity planned uh, for the next few months? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is, again, he, here we are, kind of similar scenario. Uh, when we started out and acquired this project from a private group called Pembroke, uh, formerly of Newmont Group, uh, running the show there. Uh, of course, a lot of our geos in, in-house at Tier 1 are formerly of Newmont, so we really trusted the data, we trusted the exploration that occurred there uh, for us to go and acquire this thing. Again, it was all silver-focused at Hurricane. Uh, the area that we had social access to at the time was uh, veins emanating on surface, bonanza grades, uh, channel sampling, chip sampling, so we had a really short period of time in the late fall to send our geologists up there uh, to see what we could find in our first recon mission. And sure enough, they came back uh, high grade, bonanza grade, veins emanating on surface, artisanal shafts going in 500 meters into the ground. Uh, so at one point, someone was mining some really high grade uh, silver there. Uh, but what has occurred since then, uh, just in the past few months, is we got access to the northern part of Hurricane. And that does come with historical drill results. And I believe a German group in 2012 drilled it out. Um, and these results are phenomenal. We're talking 14 meters of five and a half percent copper equiv with huge cobalt and nickel numbers, platinum, palladium. So again, once again, uh, we start off on a silver focused mission and here comes this base metal story coming to life. And so now with Hurricane, uh, we understand we're about 12 months out from probably being drill ready there. We're really trying to see how these stories connect, how the silver, how these battery base metals, things are coming to life. But what has people really intrigued about Hurricane is the nickel. I mean, predominantly you see these kind of uh, assets in, in Brazil and Peru is not really known for these kind of uh, metals. So, you know, what does this mean? What are we doing? So we have a team of geologists up there right now um, putting together the silver targets. Uh, but I think really we need to do more, more, more targeting, more surface work, more geophysics to really prove out, you know, how we're going to go and attack Hurricane. But super intriguing, and we would never walk away from from some of those numbers that we've seen. Yeah, fantastic. I think you should rename the company Tier One Metals. Hey, right? d- listen. <laughs> you know, and funny enough, you said that because uh, when we did get spun out of Orin, we were called Tier One Metals, and then when we had these phenomenal drill results or, or uh, samples results come back from Kurabaya, you know, and we had to ride that wave ourselves. So it was it was uh, Tier One Silver. So. You can call us whatever you want. If we make that discovery, I really it don't doesn't care. Matter. I'll make it Kai Hoffman uh, medals. So, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. Just name his own after me. I'll yeah, you okay. know, one of those higher grade ones. Yeah. No, um, Pierre, I really appreciate you coming in. It sounds like you got lots on the go this uh, the rest of the year, actually. The season is just starting down in Peru. Mm-hmm. Um, as you know, it's the Southern Hemisphere, so it's their winter. It's just flipped. That's right. Uh, it's flipped, so you guys are going to probably start running very, very soon. Mm-hmm. Thanks for coming in. I hope you, you come in more often for updates, and we'll chat more often as well. Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, uh, you know, Kai, I... I scan as a capital markets background. I look at our peers uh, every single day out there, and there's some phenomenal projects out there. And I hope to have uh, those big discoveries to follow it up. But really, uh, I can't find any other company out there that has the same opportunity that we do uh, in both of our projects. So really exciting. Absolutely, no, fantastic. You got lots going for yourself. I really hope the drill program turns up. Uh, maybe take some, get some sniffs of that porphyry. That'd be fantastic. Oh, I know. Or maybe I know. even hit it. I dream you know? about it. Like, I dream about it. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe even hit it. Right. Yeah. So fantastic. Everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in. This was SF Live. We were joined by T- uh, Peter Dimbicki. He is the president and CEO over at Tier One Silver, and. Uh, we discussed the projects down in Peru and uh, they're just about to start drilling down there as well. So keep an eye out and to follow the news closely and uh, leave a comment, leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we'll be back with more very, very soon. Thanks so much for tuning in.